what you were able to get everybody at the same time? It looks like it. No, so that's oh. where you can touch to. So Gary's. Well, live. not at the same time, yeah. yeah. But like they can switch between you guys. It looks like. Okay. So we are live. We should be. Let's let's check. Yeah, somebody want to. I can. I can. Oh, that one. That one is not what I want. Yeah, sure. But we're live. Hi, people of the universe. Hello. <laughs> this is so exciting. <laughs> we're all panicking, but. Do you want the TV back? It's, on? Oh, yeah, it's uh, okay. I logged into YouTube and it is showing. Gary live. We're here. We're live. Yeah. Hit record on that too. There's a little separate record thing. See if it's recording at the same time. We did the hey. thing. Good job, Gary. Good job, Gary. Bones. Oh, I'm so short. Okay. This is our. And we're recording. Yep. Okay. This is our first time live streaming, so we're having some technical difficulties because we practiced the other day for like two seconds. But all right, we're we're ready to go now, everyone. Let's do the thing. Man, I had something prepared to say at the beginning of this, and now it just all went out the window. <laughs> I don't know why live streaming is what's making me so nervous, but... but you have to Did you click back in camera I... yourself, Colton? No, he has not. Uh, oh, hi. I, I forgot about... Okay. <laughs> Anyways, like I said, nervous. All right. Well, thank you for all that are uh, tuning in with us tonight. This is, like uh, Gary just said, the first time we are live streaming together as a group. And this is going to be our D&D campaign, The Mysteries of Salago. So I want to take a quick moment. We're going to start with Carrie, go around the table. You guys just say your name and introduce yourself a little bit. And uh, we'll start with Carrie. Where are you? There you are. Hi, I'm Carrie. Um, wasn't prepared to do a personal introduction. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mm -hmm. have been doing tabletop gaming for five years, um, thanks to my husband who uh, got me involved, and and now it's become an integral part of my life. That means I'm life. Hi guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't prepared for this either. Okay? So I've been playing. I'm Buddy. Hi. Yes, that's my real name. Um, I've been playing D and D for like two years now, three years. Ish. Four. Um, four? It's been four years. It's been four years. Okay, it's been four years. Um, and I really like it. My favorite color is purple. The end. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm, I'm Gary. I've been the Forever DM for, for many, many years. I've played since second edition Dungeons and Dragons, and I've also played every other role-playing game you can think of. They had Vampire the Masquerade and GURPS and Werewolf and uh, I played Firefly for a little bit. Starfinder is our other campaign. I'm, I'm really happy to actually have a DM that I feel confident that can take the reins and give a good story so I can just be a player. And yes, all right, <laughs> next person. <laughs> Hi, I'm David. And I am also known as the intern. I recently <laughs> joined, joined Bleeding Edge Tabletop Adventures, and I I just love role playing, and it's tons of fun, and I really love being able to share it with friends. And this is this is exciting. I I'm really excited for the characters in this campaign. Is that my turn? Hi, I'm Abby. Uh, I've been playing D and D long term for about the last. What, four years now at this point with Carrie and Gary. Uh, I'm a newy single mom and this is how I keep my sanity. So to all my fellow single moms out there, there is a way. <laughs> <laughs> or not single moms. Or not single moms, True. yes. But or just parents in general. Yes. Or couples, whatever there it is. is a way whatever to keep you are. Your sanity and still <laughs> be a rockin' parent. Exactly. And I'm Colton. I will be the DM and I'm very happy and excited and thank Gary for the opportunity to do this on his, his YouTube channel. So thank you very much. And uh, yeah, the Mysteries of Salago will be running off of 5th um, edition d, &D. Um, It's completely homebrew. There's going to be a lot of homebrew mechanics and a lot of homebrew items and stuff going on in here. And I'm really excited to get into this, guys. So without further ado, welcome to Salago. The city is brimming with wonders, sights, and intrigues. This sprawling city is vibrant and full of life. All kinds of beings find their way to this grand city for the prospect of business or pleasure. There is something to tickle the fancy of any being. 
<clears throat> excuse me, bringing such a variety of lifestyles together is bound to make for some strange and exciting interactions. Through the years, there have been power struggles from the highest groups in government to back alley gangs. Now there is a tenuous peace in the city. It may not be the peace that every, everyone may want, but it is very much needed. Mysteries and intrigue abound for those astute enough to know where to look and how to listen. Where these might lead, no one can say. <clears throat> <laughs> it does not want to cooperate with me. Oh, oh, oh. 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 technical oh. issues. How but, about, but can guys, I look turn how beautiful this, off? this room is. Um, I can, yes, I can just turn it off, and then you're just gonna have to face. Yeah, I'll just yeah. face the camera. Okay, I think that'll be easier. Okay. Okay. There, there you go. <laughs> uh, sorry, guys. Once again, learning curve with this. Usually, we can edit these kind of things out, but. Okay, so, as I was saying, mysteries and intrigue abound for those astute enough, astute enough to know where to look and how to listen. Where these might lead, no one can say, but it will never be a dull experience. All sorts of beings may be encountered in Salago, from the vanilla human to the much more exotic beholder, majestic elves to grubby goblins. All walks of life have been welcomed to Salago. Now enter our courageous group of adventurers. They come from varied backgrounds, and what drew them to Salago may differ but in them all is a desire. Something that will drive them forward to pursue things even the bravest guards in Salago will, would not. A force in their very beings that propels them to uncover the unknown and bring to light that which is hidden in the dark. These intrepid heroes will soon become the Order of the Crows. And with that, we come into a sprawling city. Uh, nighttime has just begun falling. It's getting nice and quiet. People have retired to their homes. There's a little bit of uh, muck and whatnot on the, on the roads from a light rain during the afternoon. We zoom in to a little back alleyway. There's a little screw you unscrew it and then it angles down. In this alleyway, we find a man in a ramshackle tent trying just to relax and lay out for the night. He has a little cup full of a few coppers just sitting on the side when suddenly we hear a click clack of high heels coming down the alleyway. Well, not only the sound of heels, but you hear the sound of just every once in a while, just the, the, the shoes hitting a little puddle of water, making a splashing sound, and the last few remnants of the water dripping off the roofs and various other structures. And then you hear a singing that, well, it should be comforting to, to hear a, a, a beautiful voice singing a tune, but this doesn't fill anyone's heart with, with rapture or peace. Quite the opposite. This very small, petite, framed individual you would think was a child is just walking down the street heading towards this ramshackled building. She's got the biggest grin on her face, wearing a teddy bear backpack, and it's just a useful outfit, kind of skipping. She could go to the building much quicker, but she kind of takes a zigzagging path. She's in no rush. Now she gets up to the, the building and she goes and, and knocks on what little wood there is to the structure to hold it up. Mostly rags and um, 
things that would pass for cardboard in this day and age. And she, she, she knocks again. After hearing the song, the man is huddle as far back into the corner as he can. Hello? Who, who, who's out there? Hi, I'm Maisie. I'm Maisie Brumble. Have you heard of me? You're the one that if I answer your question, questions 10, if I don't answer your questions 10, I get stabbed again and again? Yes. <laughs> yes. Now, don't be nervous. I have this just brief questionnaire that I need to ask you because if you're if you're a good person, I'm going to take care of you and you're going to be one of my friends. But if not, I'm going to stab you in the temple. Mm. Now, don't don't worry about it. These are simple questions. I could Don't don't cry. Why are you crying? Listen, I listen. just I just, Okay. What do I need to do? Well, it's very simple. Just just breathe through it. It's fine. I have a few questions. Um, have you ever harmed or killed anyone intentionally, not not in self-defense? I, I haven't heard a fly. I just I lost the job at the factory, and now it's just bad luck. Was he lying? What'd you roll for your insight? Uh, yeah. I, got a, I got a five. five. He appears to be telling the truth. Okay. Okay. Do you feel remorse or guilt for any past actions? I mean, there was the one time I took the lunch from my, my buddy Bill at work, and but I just I didn't have anything, and money was tight that month, and I was... I knew I was going to get laid off, and I, I just feel awful about it, and I've tried to give it back to him, and but he, he died in an accident at work, and I just... Hmm. Have you ever felt like you have a dark side that you can't control? I, I, I don't understand what you're asking me. Refuses to... Answer. <laughs> um, have you ever experienced a traumatic event that that changed you? Well, like I said, I lost my job, and now I'm on the street, and my wife left me, and she took the kids and ran off with some high and mighty lord, I guess, as his mistress. And what, 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 what's what's her name? <laughs> what are you gonna do? I just, I just want to know. You feel ya. Yeah. Do you have an address? <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't know where she went. It's, I'm good at finding people. I used to be a detective. Oh. Yes. Yeah, okay, wait, 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 wait. We'll, we'll just continue. I, I don't have a lot of time. I, I have another appointment coming up. I'm just trying to actually kill some time. Um, here we go. Um, have you ever... I had thoughts of hurting yourself or others. I mean, it's been kind of rough, but no, no, I just ask for any aid that anybody can give me. Uh, I, I got an eight on my insight check. <laughs> Once really? again, it You're looks wrong. like he's telling you the oh. truth. <laughs> Good dice tonight. <laughs> okay, now, so now we're going to get into some serious questions here. And I want you to tell me the truth, because I can tell when you're lying. I'm really good at it. Because um, just keep in mind, you may play hopscotch with the devil, but you do not play with me. Do you understand? It, yes, ma'am. Okay. Here we go. Do you put ketchup on scrambled eggs? Ew. <laughs> no. <laughs> Even I was going to say kill him. Can, can, <laughs> can, <laughs> quit having fun. I'm trying to. Pause for laughter. 
Can you fold a fitted sheet? Be honest. I've never owned sheets. <laughs> it's okay, nobody can. People, that's just, when people say yes, I know they're lying. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, 84% of serial killers are, 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 are males. And women only get paid 75 cents on every dollar for every job that they do, even, even murder, compared to men. Does this seem fair to you? No, in fact, I think they should be paid more. I got a petition for you to sign after this. Thank you, sir. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you feel about the word moist? It's not good. It's not a good sensation. It doesn't sound good. Well, what are you supposed to have, like a damp cake? Like, how are you supposed to do anything? <laughs> He, he just kind of looks down and, like, his entire, like, floor is just wet <laughs> mud. <laughs> Moist. Let's see. Um, toilet paper roll facing out or facing the, the wall of the outhouse? What's toilet paper? <laughs> oh, my gosh! <laughs> I'll, I'll give you that one. <laughs> okay. Well, so... You squeaked by. There was a couple of ones that were kind of close there. And I was, I was, I was worried for you. But we can be friends now. Everything will be okay. Uh, okay, I, I guess. What, what are you doing? What, what is this? What, what are you doing? What do you mean? She rummages around in her teddy bear backpack. Now you're going to get what you deserve. A sandwich. <laughs> a little bit of pie. I've, I've cooked myself. Look, here's your sandwich. Here's a lemon pie. And I brought you a beer. And I'm going to give you enough money that you can go to an inn tonight and take a hot bath. Right? I just need you to do a little favor for me. Could you do it just a little favor? We're friends now, we, right? we're, we're friends, yes. I can, I can do a favor. Okay. A man's going to come up behind me in just a few moments. He thinks he's being quiet, but I can hear him. He's so clumsy. It's ridiculous. Well, anyways, he's going to take me, right? And don't try to stop him or anything like that. Don't try to be here. I know we're friends now, and you probably want to save me. But, right? Now, in a minute, you're going to hear some screaming. Right? I want you to run down the alley over there and make noise yourself to, to drown out the sounds. See, they, they won't go on for long. Uh, uh, do you want me to go now, or...? No, no, no. Wait until the, wait until the man takes me, and then you'll hear some screaming. Don't worry, it won't be me screaming. <laughs> and um, Maisie's just kind of standing there smiling. At this, at this uh, old beggar in the alley. And he sees uh, a larger gentleman come up behind her. Uh, he's actually dressed in quite fine. He has a pretty nice suit on, um, wearing a mask over his head, but a nice little top hat. And he reaches around with um, a piece of rope and puts it around Maisie's neck and just lifts her up off the ground and starts dragging her away. And the homeless man's like, yeah, yeah. and he runs down, hey, hi guys, look at this, I can juggle rocks. And, <laughs> and he starts like clinging whatever he can find around, and there's a, uh, he, uh, a couple uh, night watchmen come by. He's like, oh, oh, hey, uh, um, you, you need to be quiet, sir. It's, it's past nighttime hours, you need to be quiet down. But I just, I, and, in the alleyway, he can start hearing the, the scuffling sounds of feet. Oh, uh, uh, he drops his pants and starts running, and the two guards go after him. <laughs> <laughs> and now, Maisie. Now, Maisie, just before the guy came, took a small metal tube, and you saw her, she swallowed it and had these little, almost like piece of dental floss that she hooked on her teeth, and she's... <laughs> just before the, the man put the, the thing around her, her neck. As the, the guy's dragging her away, she lets herself go her limp and her, her eyes shut, and then he takes her and flips her over his shoulder. 
that's when her eyes open. And the guy says, <laughs> got another one. This was an easy mark. I knew it would be. She takes a stiletto dagger, jams it into the man's rib cage at a steep angle. For her, it actually is facing more down towards her feet because she's upside down. But the knife penetrates the ribs at such a steep angle. It penetrates in between the lungs and the rib cage. She waits for a large inhale of breath and then removes it. This forces a bunch of air in between the lungs and the rib cage, collapsing his lungs. <gasps> The man, now unable to take a full breath or even cry out more than a whisper, drops Maisie. You hear a thunk as Maisie's body hits the floor, <laughs> and the man just goes down on his hands and knees. <gasps> Maisie wraps herself around one of his ankles and slices through his Achilles tendon. And he... He tries to scream, but all that comes out is a... And then she just kind of laughs and sings. And as she's laughing and singing, every once in a while, she puts this little steel tube on the end of her knife, and she jams it into him in a place, and then pulls it out. And blood starts pouring out of this tube that gets left in. And she puts on another little tube, and she stabs it in. And when he seems to have passed out from blood loss, she uncovers this little four-wheeled cart that she had stashed earlier, and she rolls him on top of it, puts some trash on top of it, as if it's just a bunch of garbage, flips her clothes inside out, looks like a homeless person, and then starts dragging the body away, singing her sweet little song. And you know where I'm going after this. <laughs> okay. Guys, it's really weird to hear your own voice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that, one moment. I did better that time, though. The first time you recorded me singing, I felt like it was trash. I felt like that one was pretty good. That was you singing? Yeah. Yeah. That, that was, was really beautiful. good. Oh, thanks. I was wondering, I was like, who did you have to pay for the rights to that? But that <laughs> you was did good. A, you did a fantastic I job. I was taking a nap. All right. <laughs> I was paid with the ability to take with a nap. that, we're going to pan away. We're going to speed up time a little bit. It's now morning. Things are a little bit lighter. Um, we're going to go uh, to the Fangless Stronghold. Uh, it acts as a police station of sorts. There's a lot of criminals that come in and go out. A lot of, uh, of the main law enforcement come from the Fangless. Um, in here, we come to... One moment, let me show you. Oh, that makes it my turn. Yeah. <laughs> I'm paying attention, guys. I'm totally paying attention. You got distracted by how beautiful your singing is. <laughs> I mean, thank you. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> no. <laughs> We come to a small library at one of the top towers inside the Fangless Stronghold. In there, we see a tabaxi, a cat person, and Abby, describe your character and what you're doing. Okay. So it's early morning, not a lot of people are awake, but Akima is awake and she is on her last nerve already. She is once again barreling through this library and making all sorts of noise and it's just you hear bangs and clatters and sounds that should not be coming from a library at five o'clock in the morning just these things should not be happening but as she's running around the library she's muttering to herself it's here i know it's here it's been 300 years and we've narrowed it down to this city but what is it? I know it's here. I just, none of these books are useful. As she throws a book across the room, it hits the wall just as, 
what, what are what are the police people called? Fangless. Fangless. As the head fangless walks in with the most annoyed look on his face. Uh, in walks a rather large human, uh, human looking or large humanoid. Uh, very pale skin, some tribal tattoos running all over his face. Uh, he stands about uh, somewhere between seven and eight feet tall. Very broad shouldered, very muscular. Well, I see uh, you're taking stock in our library again, and it's not going well, I suppose. Once again, these books are useless. I've gone through them a dozen times and still nothing. I don't even know what it is. I, I don't even know what you're looking for. It's been so secretive with you being here. We've offered to help you, but we're, we're not really sure. There's lots of these stones all over the place. Wouldn't any of them work? Or if you could get a whole bunch of them together, wouldn't that work for you? No, it, it, they're, they're wrong. It's not right. And I'm not even 100% sure it is one of these stones. It's just, oh, it's useless. It's all useless. I need something new. I need, a, I need an adventure or something new, a, a whisper, a challenge, a puzzle. It's just... Ugh. Remind me again, what was this called? The Ghost's Heart. Remember, I told you this. Three, four hundred years ago now, Mother Nature came to my village and said, destruction and death will rain upon us, and the only way to stop it is with this thing and she disappeared and we don't even know what it is it was only 50 years ago that we found out that this thing is even in this city right mother nature appeared that's that's what you told us okay um well considering it's called the ghost's heart there is a particular agent that i know of that can help i think um maybe it's related to some of her special abilities but let's see if we can go and find her and with that, we're going to zoom in to the entryway where we find two persons, a dragonborn, and what looks, excuse me, we find two persons at the entrance of the Fangless stronghold, uh, a dragonborn and a elf looking person. So Carrie, describe your character and what she's doing. Um, so my character is Gillianthia, but everyone just calls her Gilly, and um, she is just exuberant to be here at the headquarters of the Fangless. She was top in her class and is one of the youngest recruits that they've ever um, uh, asked to join the, the Fangless um, her her family, she grew up in, uh, her older brother was in the City Watch, her father's the commander of the City Watch, her grandfather before him was the commander, um, back from her hometown. Um, she just, she grew up with being taught honor and justice and, and protecting the innocents and protecting those people that can't protect themselves. And she has um, a fresh, tattoo on her wrist that's uh, the insignia of the Fangless to identify herself as one one of those who who enforces the laws within the city. Um, around her neck she wears this red am <clears throat> amulet that um, this amulet she found as a small child deep within the caverns of, of her the mountainous homes where she came, came from. Um, what many people don't know though is that this amulet basically makes her a beacon for spirits. They come to her, they give her visions, um, they're seeking for peace and they need someone to champion um, for them since they can't do it for themselves. And uh, she looks up to the individual that has been assigned to be her mentor as she now enters into the Fangless um, guild and, and looks for to be mentored. And with that, David. Well, Sylvain, Sylvain de la Fleur was the son of aristocrats. His father was a successful merchant and 
As Eladrin elves, they had a special connection with nature. But it was a hundred years ago that everything went south for Sylvan. Sylvan... Sylvan turns to Gilly. So, they're giving me a brand new recruit, huh? Young Dragonborn. Are you sure you're ready for this? I'm, I'm more than ready, sir. I've been training for this my entire life. So my question for you is, did they explain to you my particular set of circumstances? Um, I don't know what you mean, so no. Well, Sylvan grins. Nope. Sylvan Sorry. grins. <laughs> and, you notice, and you notice his vampire fangs. Now, the fangless has always been dedicated to keeping the world safe from the undead, from monstrosities, from anything that is unnatural, including vampires. However, a hundred years ago, Sylvan was turned into a Dompier. Doesn't have the same weaknesses as a vampire, but unfortunately he has some of the same, you could say, quirks. And Sylvan typically prefers working alone, but the Fangless asked him to take on this young, untested dragonborn, mainly because, well, they were both unique in their own ways. And this particular day, they had been tasked with investigating a series of strange disappearances that have been happening all around the town. Homeless individuals being quizzed <laughs> and then slaughtered with a knife through the temple. Well, Gilly, let's get underway. I heard there was another killing last night. Just point me in the direction. As you two are getting prepared uh, to go, you'll notice uh, the captain of uh, the Fangless come up. Um, you know him as Hrothgar, a uh, very large Goliath. And he's coming uh, accompanied by a tabaxi uh, next to him. And you guys have seen the tabaxi go, uh, go in, to and from the library in the Fangless stronghold. Um, so you recognize her, you don't really know her. As he approaches with her, he looks both at you, Sylvan, and you, Gilly. Sylvan, I know I asked you to take on a new recruit, and that's a lot to take on right now, especially uh -huh. with all of what's going on. But as your captain, I need you to do one other thing. This uh, young feline right here really could use some help, and I believe Gilly is, might be best suited for it as well. So if you wouldn't mind, as you start this investigation, taking her along so she can shadow you guys. Hrothgar, have you, have you told her what I am? Because a lot of the newer recruits, they freak out the moment they see, and then I just hiss at you. <laughs> so my whole, her, uh, Akima's whole face lights up, her ears perk up, and she's like, <gasps> something new and she like gets right up in front of your face and she likes like grabs your head and like lifts your lifts your lips up and is like so do the fangs descend or are they always there <laughs> <laughs> if you wouldn't mind letting go of me i'd very much appreciate it oh right personal space <sighs> anyway hrothgar yes i'll take her on and i'll explain more but we need to get moving quickly the trail is going cold Gilly, let's go. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, so you guys go out. You head out and you start uh, investigating some of the uh, leads that, uh, throughout the city. Um, it starts progressing farther and farther through the day. You're getting concerned that the trail has gone cold. But as we start creeping closer to dusk... And things start to settle down a little bit. You come upon an alleyway. Oh. 
an alleyway that we had seen previ the night previous. Uh, the homeless man is back. He was able to evade the guards. Unfortunately, the thingless guards are not always the best at their job. <laughs> but he made it back. And he's sitting there, and he's just chowing down on a sandwich and a piece of pie. And has a, 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 brew, a, a, a beer next to him. Bottle's broken. And he's fairly inebriated. But he's clean. Well, we approach slowly. You don't actually have to roll for this. You can't just role play. Well, I was trying to investigate. <laughs> that was a mistake. Well, well just, what are you? What oh, are you? you, you know, well, what are you looking for? I was trying. I was trying to investigate because, as a dampier, I can actually, I can still smell blood even if it's a oh yeah no you you'll you'll smell it okay you'll smell it so Excuse gilly me. just no gilly goes right up and says sir and pulls out the scroll of laws public inebriation is against ordinance one two three i you are under arrest uh, gilly i interview gilly wait but but he's drunk gilly there's the letter of the law and there's the spirit of the law right now we need to figure out who is being a mass murderer. We have multiple dead bodies. We have multiple individuals that have disappeared. Whether or not those individuals are good does not matter. It is our job to investigate. And I have picked up a, scent, a trace of blood. And quite frankly, if I can sense blood that is this old, that's not a good sign. The, the homeless man hiccups. <gasps> Just want to point out. It, serial killer, not mass murderer. <laughs> well, there we have it. <sighs> Wait, really. what's the difference? Uh, uh, time. <laughs> Gilly? <laughs> now you may intimidate him. Sir, what do you recall from last night? I made a new friend, and she gave me food, and let me have money for the bar and the bath. She was creepy. She was so damn creepy. <laughs> Friends just... talking behind your back. <laughs> <laughs> you just hear Akima in the background. Well, that explains why he's clean. <laughs> well, listen. This friend of yours, she's hurting people. And even if she didn't hurt you, we need to find her. Do you have any idea where she could have gone? Acknowledging that you're drunk. She, she had a little bed that she drug guy that way, and he points towards the back of the alleyway. You know, there's an old abandoned theater back there. It's kind of creepy. I don't know. I'm just glad she didn't kill me. That's why I'm drinking, because I don't know if she's going to come back and kill me. And he just starts crying <laughs> at this point. Sad drunk. Got it. Gilly. And what was your name again, Tabaxi? Akima. Akima. Akima, Gilly. Start walking down the alleyway. I'm going to go up top. And then you two witness something that is one of the most frightening things you have ever seen. Sylvan literally starts crawling on the walls using spider climb. Do I have to be scared or can I just be super intrigued? Do your job. <laughs> yeah. I don't care what your sentiment is. You were given a direct order by your superior. So you ain't gotta do to your me. job. You ain't nothing yeah. to me. <laughs> Screw that! I am my own person, and I'm just going to stand at the end, the, the the bottom of the alley, just looking up at you and being like, "So many questions." <laughs> All right, and Gilly Gilly's torn because command from her uh, mentor and a drunk guy who's broken an ordinance, and so she's having internal struggle of which <laughs> which one to do, and she ends up walking down the alley. <laughs> Akima follows after Gilly because she's like, 
this is this is interesting, but there's something better this way. As we continue down the alleyway, I notice that the back of that the back door of the theater is opened just ever so slightly. Oh, you do, do you? <laughs> I have dark vision. <laughs> All three of us do. <laughs> oh, so, uh, I, got, I got something to add if he's going in the back door. I'm not going in the back door. I noticed it was open. Well, you notice the back door is open a little bit. And this blood trail that you've been following, somebody has finger painted a little triangle, right, that points right to the open door. What color is the finger paint? It's what? painted it's in blood. Blood. He said, oh, he specified. He specified that. blood. <laughs> and I hope it's red. Buddy, it, ladies and gentlemen. You know what? Okay, one. Yes, buddy. But two. Sometimes different creatures bleed different colors. The same. It's red this time. Okay. <laughs> this time we specify this time. Shame. So, you come upon this. Uh, old abandoned theater. Uh, so Sylvan's still kind of up on the wall, coming down towards the door, uh, as uh, a, a Kima, Akima, Akima, and Gilly come up to the back door, and you guys see the blood uh, and the triangle pointed at the door. You guys enter. Well, heck yeah! Curiosity yes. kills cabbages. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going for a tipeki on tipeki. <laughs> <laughs> I totally just went to French in there. Okay. <laughs> My brain. So as you guys enter... <laughs> That's okay, That's because saying. of the color of the blood you were looking for TPK. And you notice, um, as, as you enter in, there's seats filled with people in very drab clothing, uh, very uh, torn and battered. They're clean, like they're, they don't smell bad, but their clothing is very um, used. And they're just sitting there. They have, they're shaking. They're visibly shaking whatever they're holding, cups, uh, food, whatever. And at the front, where the actual stage is, you see these humanoid forms. Uh, there's elves, dwarves, tieflings, humans, just all sorts up there. And they're hanging. Um, they look like they're hanging limply. Marionette style? Yes. Cool. And as you look, you see in their wrists, in, uh, in the side, like sometimes through their ear, their cheek, uh, through uh, parts of their legs, are giant meat hooks. And they're being pulled around by what you assume are strings attached to these meat hooks. As you guys uh, slowly move through the theater, you'll notice a small girl. <laughs> question. <laughs> I have a question. Who hurt you? <laughs> technically, I did. Have you been to therapy? <laughs> technically, I did. I technically hurt Maisie because my other character, my, my old character is responsible for the death of that, the village. So technically, true. I did. <laughs> I would like it to be known I was not involved with that campaign. Uh, you know, I'm fascinated and, and afraid. Oh, I can remember. Well, when you get in there, you notice, yes, there there is a, a a person that just looks like a child in and amongst all the the other uh, people who are watching this play. But these these people are actually moving. There's some sort of a, a mechanism that are making these people move on on stage. It's it's a, a clockwork play, and that's what this playhouse was known for before. They used to have marionettes, and the the clockwork ran it so that this one person who was a, uh, um, a really good artificer could put on these plays by himself. But now there are these these bodies who are attached with the marionette was. There's a little roped off section and it says seats reserved for the fangless and it has your names <laughs> on the seats. Well, at least we know where those people disappeared to. Gilly? Akima? Let's take our seats. I, s I sense a bit of 
curiosity in the air. This could God, be intriguing. That's me. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> Sit down. I want to talk to our new friend. Excuse me. I take my oh good. I take my seat and lean back. I can't lean back because I will get away from the microphone. But I, <laughs> I lean back, cross my arms. All right. What's your game? You're a little girl. So clearly this is a game. What are the rules? And uh, what part do we play in it? Sir. Please keep your questions until the intermission. <laughs> this is a production of Hamlet, a community theater. I put on these at no cost for the... The, the, the homeless and the disenfranchised. You're being rude. Akima Shh. leans over to Sylvan and is like, plus, that's not a child. And then just goes back to watching. And uh, she, uh, Maisie is saying all of this while she is stringing up the man from last night and getting him hooked onto the, the mechanisms that uh, conduct the play. And after he, uh, you hear moans and groans from him as this is happening... And then she gently pushes him into spot. And from there, Maisie, what are you doing? And then she goes, she sits back down, she pulls a, a mechanism, and the, the person starts his acting, and a little wax cylinder is turning, saying the lines of the person. If you hear faintly, you can hear the different actors that are hanging as puppets going, Help me, help, help me. Because none of these people who are hanging are dead. She's gone through and uh, patched. You can see um, where knife holes have gone in their clothes. And you can see a massive amount of blood on all of their clothing. And there's a little bit pulling up beneath the feet of every single one of these people. But it's not going so fast that they're bleeding out to death. At least not quickly. <laughs> so... Sylvan, Gilly, and Akima, what are you guys doing? So Akima is like, she's really torn because like on the one hand, she knows this is wrong and she's like, we should probably cut them down. But on the other hand, she is fascinated beyond all belief. She is trying to figure out how this works. Not only the mechanics of the theater, but like what kind of twisted person would harm someone so bad only to patch them up to then string them up to this fabulous mechanic system so she's worrying with herself so she just she kind of has this scrunchy look on her face her ears are pointed down and she's just mumbling help or watch help or watch <laughs> gilly is sure that this is against some sort of ordinance but at the same time she too is also fascinated <laughs> because the precision of the placement of these hooks is like surgical like, it's, it's just, it's like pure genius. <laughs> She's sickly fascinated. Exactly. <laughs> so then? Be more decisive. <laughs> no, that's... <laughs> you have two very young people who are just like, what we have here? <laughs> well, Sylvan has slowly been slipping his bow off of its holder from on his quiver. 14. And I, I'm shooting just to pin Maisie's arm <laughs> to the wall. Is a 14 good enough to hit you? Would you roll? Yes, it is. I think yes, it is. <laughs> it, it, it is an, uh, enough to, to hit me. Okay. So you hit her in the arm. So... And it's just to pin her clothes. Oh, pin her clothes? Yeah, I'm not okay, trying to... Okay, you're not trying to do damage to her. Okay, so you're, you uh, get her just... Uh, so, Maisie, your arm... Excuse me. Your arm is pinned, and it's just kind of got your shoulder right here, right in the pillar behind you. Is that how it's going to be? After I gave you free seat to this play, which is very well written... She takes, you see her, her, her teddy bear, she grabs it. It pulls into two pieces and 
pulls over the top of her, revealing that the inside of it is leather armor. And so <laughs> now she instantly has armor. She grabs the two legs of the bear and she pulls it out, revealing that she, she has a weapon in either hand. You see the teddy bear leg on, on the handle itself. <laughs> you know, you take your seat, sir. You should know. I could have hit you. But it seems to me that we could be better friends than enemies. What do you say we all go back to the Fingless headquarters and sit down and chat? And maybe we see about getting you some new tools for your puppets. So she goes pulls out this thing, she pulls the pin, and she goes, you'll have to catch me first. And she drops, and all of a sudden smoke <laughs> fills the theater. Uh, <laughs> and then, oh, yeah, I think it turned it down. Then there's the chase music. The Scooby-Doo music! That's she's, not. She's, running not across, Scooby-Doo. she's running across the, the, uh, the little scaffolding above the, the theater, and, and you try to catch her, you go to get her, and she grabs a rope and cuts the, the line like you see in the movie and the weight goes down and she goes up even higher. And, and then just when you think you got her again, she pulls a lever down a, a little trap door and she's, <laughs> you, uh, she's crawling under benches. She's so small that she just weaving in and out of people. Now eventually, you know. Oh, and by the way, this whole time I'm crawling on the wall. Like I am oh. going full vampire mode. I have mm-hmm. deathless nature, so I don't even need to breathe. So the smoke doesn't even phase me. I am literally just coming at you, and so sorry. Just picturing this, like you have Maisie, <laughs> that's this impish creature, and then you have me just. <laughs> <The key. laughs> and then no. Hey, hang on, hang sorry. on, hang on, Akima. So at this point, Akima's kind of snapped out of her, like, conundrum, and she's like, okay, help, help. Observe, uh, figure out later, help now. So she goes, she kind of just walks up on the stage, and she's looking at the, the, the mechanism, and she's like, this, this way. And she pulls a lever, and they start coming down off the <laughs> marionette-style hang-ups, and she's like, Gilly! Hey! Gilly, go in, go in, you take them off the hooks. <laughs> Gilly? Yeah, I I will definitely put help people before. I, I look at I'm like, my mentor has it. He's he's after Maisie. I'll go help the people. S- start detaching them. <laughs> okay. Maisie. So uh, I'm running at this point. I pull out my <laughs> book. I said you're screwed now! Cena archophilic Fina Archophilamine! How the, how the hell do you pronounce that word? It's all it's all vowels! Damn it! It's um, all vowels. <laughs> uh, and at, at this point we're both running through the rafters. Arsena archophilic Fina Archophilamine! So at this point we're both running in the rafters. Damn. I take out <laughs> I take out a small a small hammer that I have. I tie it to the end of the rope that I have, and I literally throw it to trip Maisie. Okay. I thought like you were gonna hit her in the head with a and, hammer. No, and then you just see Maisie. <laughs> do you want to fight against it? Uh, uh, no. I think it would. I think it would be you know funnier for her, him <laughs> to have. So I think it'd be funnier for him to have missed with that, right? Mm-hmm. And I tied myself up and tripped and pretended like you got me. Okay. So all of a sudden, uh, so, so then you throw the hammer and you you throw it around and you do your little tripwire thing and you just see Maisie, and a big old thump. And it sounds like she rolled a couple of times. Last. And I come running up and I take out manacles. Are you done yet? Just a little girl. Why are you doing this to me? Akima from I across the room. It's not a little girl. 
I slap the, and I just slap the manacles on you and lift you up. Well, sleight of hand check. Oh no. Um, that's on an angle. I want to do it again. Oh. <laughs> there okay. you go. Um, there you there you go. So I got a sixteen, right? And what I want to do is when he goes to put the manacles on me, I want to grab them, flip them around really quick, and, and put the manacles on him. Okay, so roll a perception check to see if you can counter her sleight of hand. I rolled a 20. I rolled Dude, a crit. Huzzah! <laughs> so there's a bit of back and forth between you two, and you're just like unclasping and clasping and unclasping and clasping, <laughs> and then finally Sylvan gets the manacles on your wrist for real this time. <laughs> and then I brush my beautiful locks out of my eyes. Just come with us. Believe me, we don't want to hurt you, and frankly, I don't want to imprison you. We just need you. Let's move. Well, I painted a big red arrow and left the door open for you. I reserved seats for you. I was always intending to go with you. I just wanted you to wait until my play was over, which you are been quite rude, and I'm never inviting you to my playhouse again, just so you know. Listen, so I'm going to go with you, but... It's because I chose to. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Someone just smiles. And he looks you in the eyes. And before you can react, he literally flips around and bites down on your neck to get some spinal fluid and it knocks you out. <laughs> <laughs> like I feel like there should be roles for that. Okay. I really feel yeah. like there should be roles. Yeah, we could we could do that. some roles. Um so roll for your unarmed strike. Okay. Um and I'll say at advantage because she is manacled right now, so she is technically restrained. That means you rolled twice. I know, yeah. Well. So I I So I rolled I got 20, <laughs> I got 24. Okay. On one of them. What happens if you roll you a the one highest. and you're, you get, you, you can take, I ignore you roll the one? Twice, yeah. Yes. If I had advantage. Yeah, you roll twice, take the higher number. Okay, so I got 24. 24, okay, that will definitely get you, so. One of the things, because I knew who was coming after me. Remember I said I, 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 I've been a detective before, right? I've been scoping out the area, and I even had the seats with their names on them reserved. So one of the things I asked for was um, it's made from a bunch of different things, but from like oak bark, for example, these tannins. I've a heavy concentration, I distilled it down and soaked the collar of my, my neck in it and uh, coated my skin so when he bites down on it, it is an incredibly strong coagulant. So if he was going to bite me on the neck, he is going to have to make a constitution check to see if he's going to remain conscious because the blood that flows through you is now congealing. I didn't bite blood. Any part of, of me. Yeah, it's I any part of you. I my skin and my clothes. So constitution I'm wearing save? a turtleneck just Yeah, so a con save. Um, that one will do... Nine. Yeah, no. <laughs> so, so is Maisie like level 12 and we're all like level 1? Or... <laughs> no, she's just extremely prepared. <laughs> I'm like Batman. Oh, so, how'd you do this? I'm Maisie. <laughs> so, Sylvan, so you feel inside of you, something's not quite right. Um, so you're going to have to hurry and get over to your, um, your two helpers before because you can tell something is coursing through you to knock you down um so you'll need to hurry over to uh gilly and akima really that's quick that's all right because i have laying on my hands because i'm a paladin <laughs> so is that what you're gonna do yep okay perfect so yeah go ahead and mark off uh whatever points you need to mm -hmm. for that um i think it's five points for uh poisons yeah that so. would be poison right yeah yeah it's a type of poison so so I can also make cool. a medicine check. I'm pretty, I'm not proficient in medicine, but I do have... Pretty... We'll stick with laying on of hands. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know how well that's going to work. Technically, the spell is designed to counteract a poison, and this was made as a medicine, and wording is important, especially in spells. But I do have the antidote for it. I just wanted to teach him a little bit of a, a lesson. Here, and, he, and she goes, and she pops a little cork. Drink this. <laughs> I'm really not liking you. 
And now we know Sylvain will just take things when it's offered to him. So. <laughs> also, very good to know. He might not have used all his hands. So that works. Also, Sylvain will just bite things. So. Yes. <laughs> Whether he knows them or not. Okay. So at this point, it's almost as great as just uh, random things. Akima, <laughs> Sylvain, uh, Maisie, and Gilly, you all leave. Uh, Maisie does have her little manacles on, but she is. Very much okay with this. <laughs> she got exactly what she wanted. As you guys move out, um, you've been able to, you know, uh, uh, stabilize everybody in there. All the homeless people are shuffling out. Um, now it's time for you guys to report back to the Fangless. So one moment. It's like dusk now. Yeah, it's like the middle, uh, almost the middle of the night at this point. You could say it's like, actually, I'll tell you exactly what time it is. It's like... 11.59 slash midnight. Slash? She looks at the sundial <laughs> on what she's wearing. Shut on up! Her she the it. moon has crested to the exact location it is supposed to be at. Okay? 11.59 <laughs> midnight. Nope, I, I dig that. Okay. It's, it's... So, as you walk along, the quiet quiet streets of Salago, um, you come, come across another alleyway, because everything happens in alleyways. <laughs> <laughs> this particular one is next to a tavern. A lot is going on inside. It's very loud, boisterous. It's just a bunch of workers that have gotten off for the day and are, are going well into the night. This is the end of the work week for them, so they're celebrating. Uh, you, uh, Sil- Sylvan, Gilly, and Akeem and Maisie, as you guys walk by this particular alleyway, you hear something. You hear a bit of a scuffle. Before they, when they walk past the alleyway from before, I want everybody to make a perception check for me. I'm good at those. My dice are at this. Are time. we doing the? No, just just go with it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got a three. Let's try that again. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Uh, dirty twenty. Nice. Okay. I think. Like, my perception. Oh, uh, so I got a, a 10. Okay. So Gilly and Akima would notice the homeless man from earlier. He's there, but he appears to be asleep, and you're not sure if he's alive anymore. That's all. <laughs> Are you there? No. Okay, he's so. just dead. Oh, uh, maybe. Thank you for telling us. <laughs> I'm He's glad, maybe dead. I'm glad you guys got good perception checks. We went, we went off the books a little bit, so I'm not sure where we're going with this. But anyways, I you know see what's the... going on up here, okay? Okay, well, and I thank you That's for warning scary. me. <laughs> <laughs> up here, guys, up here. Up here. Okay, anyways, so Gilly and Akima, you both notice the homeless man from earlier in the alleyway laying slumped on the ground in the alley. What do you do, Gilly? Um, I, I see my opportunity to then arrest my <laughs> original... First thought, arrest him. <laughs> arrest the drunkard. <laughs> so I would go over there and I guess try to arouse him. And Akima, are you going to go over there with her or no? Um, yeah, I'll go over there. My interest is peaked. So obviously you would notice this at this point, Sylvain. You know, what's your name, little one? Oh, sorry. (laughs) My name is Maisie. It's right on the theater. Maisie Clockwork Repertory Theater. (laughs) Well, even though you know who I am, I will formally introduce myself. My name is Sir Van Der Lefer. Nice to meet you. And she um, shakes your hand. which is one of them has been, um, the handcuffs have been undone. I'm aware. I was going to take them off. <laughs> sure you were. <laughs> I was. Okay. Gilly. Can I arouse the sleeping man? Um, no. Okay. <laughs> No. Side note, my brain tried to fill in that sentence you were making with Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> <laughs> so, I... <laughs> so, I mean, Akima, since you seem to have medical background, will you verify that this guy is dead or alive? 
Yeah. So I'll I'll make a I'll make a medicine check. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Can she tell how dead he is? If he's like recent dead, he's um, mostly dead. No, <laughs> I can only tell that he's dead. Okay. Like I, I, I what'd you roll on your medicine check? Fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah, he's been dead for. You see, you'd seen him in the afternoon, going into the the afternoon or going into the later afternoon. So there, it's only been a couple hours since you've seen him. Yeah. So it's I not even been a full day. An approximation, but uh. Yeah, no. Roughly, like, you lift his arm up and rigor mortis hasn't set in, so it's only been maybe a couple of hours. Yeah. And then she also is going to turn back to Sylvan and look him dead in the eyes and be like, again, it's not a little girl. And then just goes back to what she's doing. Are you coming in at this point or no? No, I'm in the other alley. They gotta get there. Oh, gosh. Hey! What? I... I didn't do that. That I, he was alive. I gave him a sandwich. This, he was one of my friends. Actually, we would believe you because we saw him right before we saw you, and there's kind of impossible for you to be two places at once, or is it? Listen, I made that that pie from scratch, from scratch. <laughs> So you, so you scratched people to make it. Uh, no. <laughs> I used fresh ingredients. Suck heads on you. Oh, it's on me. I thought you wanted to say something. Oh no, I was just, I was just laughing. Um, yeah. Kate dead. <laughs> okay. I don't know that's a dead person. Yeah. I was like, this, man is dead and uh he's not coming back to life unlike okay uh, kind of dead so but this means that there's someone else i can go f- capture i know this is against the ordinances <laughs> <laughs> so i don't quite know what you have in mind here you have to go to the other alley so you're, you're... do they see any other tracks or anything they see part like this much of a high heel that is black that appears to have broken off and it's just in a puddle on the ground. So is this what I think it is that you did? <laughs> yeah, probably. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, okay, that helps me. Thank you for letting me know beforehand so I could actually describe this. Sorry. My wife, everybody. She makes my life easy. <laughs> okay, so like to as you got, uh, so he, we'll just say he was face down, so you didn't notice this before. His throat's been slit. Oh, <laughs> okay. okay. Call on him. <laughs> so Maisie, we're friends now, right? Listen, I didn't kill that guy. I was gonna say I didn't even kill the other guys in the theater. They, they were. They were unwilling participants in my play, yes, but they're not dead. Maisie, it, ha- it just so happens that I recognize some of those men as some fairly notorious criminals from Sao Lago. Mm-hmm. So, I am act- I don't want anything other than for you to go maybe have a little bit of fun with the person who slaughtered your friend. But, come back. We'll follow you. And I will point out that, yes, some of the people that you found in Maisie's theater were notorious criminals that you guys have been tracking and the other famous members have been tracking. Others you didn't even know about. Listen, I, 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 I don't just, I have a code. Uh, my, my mom gave me, I, I have to ask questions first or I have to have seen them do something. I, I have a, I have a, I have a, a, th- a threshold of, of evidence that, that I need. We could have you executed in front of a tri- tribune. <laughs> <laughs> the choice is yours, Maisie. Either you help us now so that we can help you, or we could go right to the famous headquarters right now, have you executed, and then we can pick up this investigation later without you. I didn't say I wasn't going to help. Listen, that whole thing leading you there, that was like a big job resume. I was always planning on joining you guys, 
And, you know, yeah, I mean, I'll track somebody down, but you said go find them and have some fun. I'm just saying there's a burden of evidence that I, I have a clipboard. <laughs> <laughs> Your friend has had his throat slit. So you better get moving. All right, fine. So, suddenly, from out of the other alley, comes a woman, and she's running, and you can tell she's not doing it well. She trips and falls. She's covered in blood. Her hair is all over the place. She's a mess, um, and she's running, and she's just saying, Help me! Help me! They're coming! I can't! I don't! Oh, damn it! And she turns around, and she says something, and fire whooshes out of her hand, and, and she's like, I freaking missed again and she just keeps running and she runs right towards you guys and like this way yeah at them and she um runs she in the trips. back of gilly yeah she tripped she probably tripped over gilly's tail she she uh comes running down and uh is going to touch gilly's back and right as <laughs> she's about to she trips and gilly just hit had this funk behind you it doesn't do anything to you you just stand there and you look down and there's this so go ahead and describe your character. There's this purple tiefling. Um, she has super crazy curly um, red hair. You, in fact, you like you can't even see her face at this point because her hair is so all over the place. She just kind of brushes it out of her face, and she has piercing green eyes and super red lipstick on. And she just points back, and she's shaking, visibly shaking. She's got like cuts and bruises and stuff all over. And she says, "The the the vampires! We have to! You have to!" Um, and you hear, uh, farther down the road, you hear these, Get back here, you little... And some expeditives come from <laughs> farther back. <laughs> Quite a number of them. It doesn't want to work. No, I think you've turned me down. Beep. Oh, there, there you go. go. Ha! <laughs> okay, so Gilly. What are you doing? That, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> And you'll see you'll see a couple of figures coming down. Their hoods are up. Uh -huh. um, you can see one of them has like a dagger in his hand. The other one doesn't appear uh, armed. So I I would step. I would put, I'd place myself between them and her. Move that so you can kind of see a little bit better. And then I would I would have my you know my weapon in front of me. Thanks. Okay. Akima. Okay. So I'm going to help this wild tiefling up off the ground um, and just being like, uh, just kind of like a giddiness in her eyes. And she's like, there are vampires coming? Yeah. And then she takes off her shoes and hands them to you. One of them is missing a heel. So Kima just kind of stares at them, and she's like, like you can you can see the light bulb go off, and she kind of like scurries back to the alley, and she bends down, and she she picks up this little stick looking thing, and she's like, I found it for you. <laughs> can you fix it for me too? I can try. Yes, they're my favorite shoes. I'm I'm, I'm I am rolling to try to fix the shoes. <laughs> Don't druids have mending? Can't druids just fix things? Sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, I'm, she's only level one right now. I'm like, I'm only level one um, right now. I rolled <laughs> yeah. a 19, but I rolled a 19. I feel like so that's a I feel like to I, fix the shoe. To yeah. fix the shoe. So I. I well, do, like... do you have the do you have the heel? Like, is the heel gone? Yeah, no, yeah, she yeah, yeah. It. it was. So it was we were we were already described that like. A oh, it's just bit of the heel. We fe uh, a high heel was in on the. Oh, in the air. In the in the and so when I when she handed me her shoes and I noticed that they were missing, it clicked in my head that the little stick looking thing that was that we just saw was the missing oh. part of the high heel. So Sorry. I went and I picked it I up missed that. and I fixed it and I give you back your shoes. Well, uh, so I see this exchange and I go over um, to the, the, the new arrival. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up the clipboard a little Hi. bit more. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Maisie. Have you ever harmed or killed anyone intentionally, uh, not in self-defense? And then she looks you in the eyes. 
Nope. I rolled a 19. So roll deception or persuasion. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You gotta get the shakes out. Yeah. And just so y'all know, if I call for you to roll a deception or persuasion, that's your choice. You don't have to declare what you're rolling. Okay? 22. 22, and yeah. you had what for your insight? Um, my uh, insight, I have a 20. You have a 20? So looking in her eyes, she doesn't break gaze, but for a second to look to the side, and you can tell that's a, a tell that, yeah, she's she seems to be telling the truth. All right, we're going to just skip down to the important one. How, how do you feel about the word moist? <laughs> <laughs> okay sometimes but it's also really gross sometimes because nobody wants to eat damn cake mm. <laughs> so Maisie's heavily ev evaluating the new person <laughs> I have colleagues watching this <laughs> this is this should be fault. called the moist episode <laughs> <laughs> session moist <laughs> okay that's been a so, long running thing though yeah, so now these uh, figures come up. Oh, wait. That is our girl. Give her back to us. We need to take her back to the boss. No, they're going to kill me. I don't want to go back to them. They're going to kill me. They killed that other guy. I watched him do it. Please. I was just trying to protect him. I can't. I don't. And she's just floundering, and she just keeps talking in panic until somebody interrupts her. Um, I will interrupt. Oh, go okay. Sylvan. Sylvan. Sylvan immediately just grabs the tiefling on the shoulder and pulls her back slightly not 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 aggressively just well she's already behind Gilly. oh she's already behind okay yeah i'm, I'm protecting okay. her yeah. myself so this, between this is where she's at akima's here with her shoe Maisie's interrogating her okay so you'll be like okay. right about there so, so then, you and so you Gilly and Gilly would right. be up front so i draw my rapier <clears throat> and i turn to the tiefling <clears throat> and i just bare my fangs to see her reaction. How does she react? <laughs> she was scared of vampires, so I was trying to figure something out. But I'm going ah. to... I'm not going to do anything. Will I be able to tell the difference between a, a vampire and a vampire? No. Uh, there's subtle the differences. Um, in this lighting? There's subtle differences. What I know. With your knowledge, yes. Yeah. Okay. But Maisie's going to mention some to her. She's going to go, he, he's, he's, you know, uh, you know, got one of those, uh, he's a suck head, uh, uh, you know, one of those snow cones, you know, the pig. He's not an albino. <laughs> got it. Got it. <laughs> but, come on, just, just hand her over. That's all, all we're asking for. Look, I'll put, I'll put my weapon away. He, he sheathes his knife. The other one's just kind of holding up his hands, not saying anything. Um, I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, but my boss trumps your boss. She, she stays. <laughs> what are you? What? I'm easy. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm. Listen, they're starting it. They start. I'm just get. I'm just getting ready. I like what about your prepared. clipboard? What? When I need you. What? When I need you. Listen. You don't have time for this right now. Make some noise so I can sneak around behind them. <laughs> okay. So I just. So Sylvan just bears his fangs at these alleged vampires in an attempt to assert dominance. And I'm, I'm trying to sneak around behind them. Okay. So as you bear your fangs. The one that put his uh, knife away that you can see his face a little clearer. He's like, oh, didn't realize she was marked. Our boss wanted her. Sorry. And he starts backing up. The one, uh, who, his, he has his hood up. It is, his face is very heavily obscured. Turns around and just walks away. Ken. And slowly, the other one, realizing his buddy is gone, bolts. 
Okay, well, never mind. Did you want to do something? Then I sheath. Not anymore, but I well, to run away. What did, what did you want to do? I, what I was going to do was do some investigating and some intimidation to try and get the, the one that was remaining to crack. Oh, okay. But it's okay. Okay, no problem. Did you? So I she. They left. I don't, I don't, we don't need to kill them now. I'm safe. You're safe. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I was just... There was this poor old drunk guy and he was hitting on me and it got really weird and I was just telling him I wasn't interested. It, it just was walking down the alley and then all of a sudden these guys came up behind me and they were like, Hey, wait, the boss wants you. And I was like, I don't know who your boss is. Please leave me alone. And then the poor drunk guy tried to step in front of me to save me and they cut his throat and there was a lot of blood and I ran away and broke my shoe and... Well, Gilly, you're the one who gets to fill out the report for command on this weird, weird ass night. Oh, let's get moving. Gilly, can I? I want to roll an insight check just to check her. Yeah. So go ahead and roll deception or persuasion. Okay. And you roll your insight. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> I can't. What, what did you roll? Did you, I rolled a. What did I get? I can't. There's a stupid glare on my paper. Hold on. Now I can't find it. <laughs> now I got a math. Oh crap. So, Gilly, what did you get for insight? Hey! Seven. seven. She got a seven. Did okay, you? I, I got a 13, so I didn't do much better. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, I'm grounded. Watching her and everything, you're just kind of caught up in the moment. Um, from the way she's acting all frantic and, and just, like, scared and whatnot. Yeah, she's telling you the truth. All right. Can you please come back with us to make a statement at our headquarters? Yes, I, I'd love to. I My family has a bad, bad history of vampires, and it's just, they scare me a little more than regular creatures. But, you know, you're just, you know... Uh, what'd you call him, Maisie? The suckhead? Yeah, he's he's a suckhead. He actually tried to bite me on my <gasps> neck earlier. Why would you bite such a sweet I, little I'm, girl? I'm just Not a little girl. Are you oh. Sylvan? Listen. Before we get moving any further, I rolled a crit. Success. On, on do what? investigation or insight. Insight? Well, she still has to roll against your insight, okay. so deception or persuasion. What are you trying to insight from me? How did you get tangled up with vampires? I need to know. What'd you roll in here? 21. 21? Oh. What's your insight? So my insight is plus three, so I'm at 23. 23. So he beats you with just barely. So, um... She hasn't really given a story yet on being entangled with that, but I'll say that insight was for her whole describing uh, what the alley, what what happened in the alley and everything. And you can tell that there's some truth in there. There's a kernel of truth in there, but she's coding it. I... My parents... Vampires have a very unique way of doing that to you, all of us. Let's move. We should get back to headquarters before this night gets even more disturbing. Let's go. Maisie, come along. Fina Archophilic. Fina Archophenamine. Fina Phenamine. Fina Fina. Give it up with the spell book already. Let's move. Can I try? You know, we're just. Listen. <laughs> Children. Closer, but no. Hmm. Not a child. <laughs> what language is this, Maisie? Oh, that's a visual, and I'm trying to uh, suffer, uh, summon Asmodeus. What are you going to do with Asmodeus? What? 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 <laughs> I need an usher for my play. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Yes. You... <laughs> What kind of play? <laughs> I like plays. 
Well, I was just putting on Shakespeare, and then <laughs> somebody <laughs> crashed it, and they took all my actors. Hmm. Can you be? Can you crash something you were invited to? Listen, listen. You, you're. All you had to do was wait until it was over, and then I would have went with you. Now all those people are going. I'd look, it was for free, so they're not going to get a refund or whatever. I'm going to get bad reviews. I, I see your point. <laughs> well. It's all on you guys. For what it's worth, I, I don't speak a, a basil, but is that an ear? Yes. Is this skin? Yeah, that's that skin. Ah! skin. Okay, well, I don't speak a basil, but if you got anything in your I can help you with that. I still want to see your play. You're weird. With that, um, the group steadily starts walking towards the Fangless Stronghold. Um, it is very much into the late, late night. We're about two or three in the morning at this point. As they approach uh, the gates to get in, the night watchmen are there at the gates to uh, to see who's coming in and, who, and vetting everybody that's coming in. Um, they'll see you, Sylvain, and you, Gilly, coming up, and they'll give a short little nod, and they bang three times, and the doors open up for you guys to go inside. And with that, guys, is session zero. And, audience, thank you for joining us tonight. Woo! Thank you for coming and getting to experience this wild ride <laughs> <laughs> of maniacal nonsense. <laughs> And we look forward to having many, many more sessions with the Order of Crows. It's session moist. Not session <laughs> <laughs> session moist. <laughs> All right, well. <laughs>